Hello, in this video, we're looking at lesson 11.2 on comparing data sets. Remember in the previous lesson, 11.1, we learned how to create various types of data displays. We looked at dot plots, histograms, and box plots. Well, in this set, we're gonna look more at how to interpret data from these different data displays. The essential question that we'll be answering is how can you use measures of center and spread to compare data sets? In this first example, we're going to compare data sets displayed in dot plots. Sawyer has narrowed his car search down to two different types of cars. To make an informed decision, he gathers data on estimated highway fuel efficiency in miles per gallon of two different types of cars. The dot plot shows the data for each type. When we look at data in a dot plot, a good idea to see kind of where the center of the data is, is to find a cluster. Remember from 11.1, the cluster is just the area where most of the data is gathered. So we can see here that in type one, the cluster is mainly from 33 to 38. Type two is a little bit more spread out, but we can still see that if you look at the data, yes, it's mostly clustered from 37 to 40, but really all of the data here is pretty close together, 35 to 44, all of the data is gathered there. So I'm gonna call that kind of the larger cluster of 35 through 44. And now that we've identified the clusters, let's go ahead and answer the questions below. If fuel efficiency is the most important feature to Sawyer, which type of car should Sawyer purchase? Okay, again, the fuel efficiency is the miles per gallon. We saw that type one, most of the cars were clustered from 33 to 38. But in type two, the cluster is higher at 35 to 44. Notice that the upper end of this cluster, 38, right here, most of that cluster is above 38. So if Sawyer is really concerned with having the car that has the best fuel efficiency, he should choose type two. And again, it just has a higher cluster four miles per gallon. Next, let's compare the data distributions. When we compare two data distributions, we're typically looking for two things, the center and the spread. For the center of the data, we're again just gonna look at the clusters. So I'm gonna write down the clusters for type one and type two. So for dot plots, when we're talking about the center of the data, we're looking for where is the cluster, where is most of the data located. For spread, with a dot plot, you can very easily see the range of the data. Now remember, range is something that I'm sure you've learned in a previous math course. To calculate the range, the range is just the maximum number, so the highest data value, minus the minimum or the lowest data value. So if we go ahead and look at type one, we see that the max is at 41 and the min is at 33. So if we want the range of the data, we just do 41 minus 33 and we find that that's eight. So type one has a range of eight. Similarly, type two, the low is 35 and the high is 51. So again, I'm going to calculate the range, take the maximum, 51 minus 35, and that is 16. So when describing the spread using a dot plot, it's easiest to compare the range. So type one has a smaller range of just eight miles per gallon, whereas type two has a little bit larger of a range with a range of 16 miles per gallon. In this next example, we're gonna compare data sets displayed in box plots. Caitlin and Philip go to neighboring high schools and both are sponsoring charity fundraisers. Caitlin claims that students at her school are raising more for charity than the students at Philip's school. The amounts raised by a random sample of 30 students at each school are shown in the box plots below. Do the data sets support Caitlin's claim? And again, Caitlin's claim was that students at her school are raising more for charity than students at Phillips School. And we wanna look at the data from the box plots to determine, do the data sets support Caitlin's claim? In order to do that, let's go ahead and look more specifically at the key values that we can get from the box plot. 
Let's go ahead and look at some key values from the box plots to help decide if Caitlin's claim is correct or incorrect. So first you can see here, I have the box plots above and we're gonna identify some key values for each of the two schools. Let's start with Caitlin's high school. For the minimum value, that's the lowest value. Remember that's just the leftmost whisker. So you can see here that at Caitlin's high school, the min is 25. The maximum is the highest value. That's the rightmost whisker here at 68. The first quartile is going to be the left edge of the box. And for Caitlin's High School, that's at 32. The median is the center of the data. And that's going to be the line through the box, which for Caitlin's School is at 45. And then the third quartile is at the right edge of the box, which for Caitlin is 52. Now we're going to go ahead and calculate the interquartile range, which is abbreviated as IQR. And to calculate the IQR, you just take the difference between the third quartile, so that's Q3, minus Q1. So here we would take 52 minus 32, and we would end up with a interquartile range of 20. Go ahead and fill out those same values for Phillips High School. Pause the video and try this one on your own. So here are the values that you should have gotten for Phillips High School. Now that we have those values recorded, let's go ahead and answer the question. How does the structure of the box represent the interquartile range? Let's go back and look at those two values that we used to calculate the interquartile range. Remember that Q1 is the left edge of the box. I'm going to mark Caitlin's here. And Q3 is the right edge of the box. So essentially the interquartile range just corresponds with the length of the box. Even if we hadn't calculated the actual interquartile ranges, we can tell just from the picture here that Caitlin's school has a higher interquartile range. Notice how the box for Caitlin's school is much larger than the box for Phillips school. Now let's go ahead and compare the distribution. So I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit. When we compare distributions, we're gonna focus again on the center and the spread. As far as the center goes, when you have a box plot for the center, I want you to focus on the medians. So I'm gonna go ahead and circle the medians here. 45 was the median at Caitlin School and 50 was the median at Phillips School. So you can see that the median at Phillips School is five more than the median at Caitlin School. For the spread of the data, we're gonna focus on the interquartile range. Now, another measure of spread is of course the range, but notice how both Phillips and Caitlin School have the exact same range. They both have a maximum of 68 and a minimum of 25. So if we take the difference there, they'd have a range of 43. But since those ranges are the same, that doesn't necessarily mean that the data is the same. We can see here, obviously, that Phillips School um, is less spread out when it comes to that middle 50%. One important thing you can gather from a box plot is that the box represents the middle 50% of your data. So based on this information, because for interquartile ranges, Caitlin School has an IQR of 20, and Phillips School is almost half of that at 11. So that shows that the data is more spread out at Caitlin School. So even though the maximum and minimum values are the same for the money donated in dollars, we still have the data being more spread out at Caitlin School because that middle 50% of the data has a lot more variation. Now that we have all the data studied here, let's go back to our original question. So going back to our original question, remember that Caitlin claimed that students at her school are raising more for charity than students at Phillips School. Do the data sets support Caitlin's claim? We just studied the data sets and looked at a variety of different things. Now remember that both the data sets have the same range. They both go from 25 to 68, but the data is spread out differently at the two schools. If we look at the middle 50% of Caitlin's school, we can see that that's from 32 to 50. Whereas at Phillips school, there's a higher range for that average or kind of middle area here. That's from uh, 45 up to 56. Another way we can look at it would be 
based on the data here at Caitlin's school, 50% donated $45 or more. But at Phillips School, 50% donated $50 or more, which is higher. So does the data support Caitlin's claim? Your answer would be no. And the reason is what I just said. Let me write that down quick. So again, because the 50% at Phillips School raised 50 or more, which is higher than 45 or more, the claims actually suggest that Caitlin's school raised less than Phillips School. So for our final answer, the data suggests that individual students at Phillips School raise more money. So our data is actually showing that the students at Phillips School are raising more money than the students at Caitlin's School. So now that we've gone ahead and compared data from both dot plots and box plots, I want you to pause the video and complete this quick write. Which types of plots are easiest to compare? Both types of plots are easiest to compare depending on what you're comparing. So I want you to use these two sentence starters. Box plots are easiest to compare when, finish the sentence, and dot plots are easiest to compare when, finish the sentence. Go ahead and pause the video and complete the quick write. Ready? Pause the video. So here are the key things that I wrote for my quick write. Your answers might vary, but basically I want you to understand that if you want to compare medians, box plots are the way to go. It's also very easy to look at range or interquartile range from a box plot. Dot plots are best to compare when you're looking to see how is the individual data clustered and where are any outliers. Now we're going to compare data sets displayed in histograms. A marketing team compares the ages of a random sample of 30 viewers of two popular new shows to decide which product to advertise during each show. During which show would the marketing team advertise a product that is targeted toward adults ages 20 to 29? So let's go ahead and look at ages 20 to 29. Now remember, each of these was a sample of 30 viewers. So we have 30 viewers for show one, 30 viewers for show two. We can see that for show number one, there were zero viewers from 20 to 24. And then from 25 to 29, we have eight viewers. Let's go ahead and look at show two. Again, for 20 to 24, here we have three, and here we have five, which once again, makes eight viewers from 20 to 29. But still, one show is better to advertise toward than the other. Yes, they both have the same number of viewers, eight, but show one is really targeted toward that larger or that older age group, 25 and up. Whereas show number two is gonna have people from both categories, from 20 to 24 and from 25 to 29. So show two would be the best to advertise for 20 to 29. So again, show two is better because even though they both have eight out of 30 viewers in the range of 20 to 29, show two has viewers in all of the age brackets. So there's three viewers from 20 to 24, as well as five viewers from 25 to 29. So we're getting kind of all of the ages versus show number two, or sorry, number one, which is kind of targeted toward those older adults. The last part of the question here says, if the marketing team wants to advertise a product targeted to 25 to 34 year old adults, during which show would they advertise? Go ahead and try this question on your own. Don't forget to explain your answer. Ready? Pause the video. So you should have found that show one would be better to advertise toward adults ages 25 to 34. If we go ahead and add together the two brackets, 8 and 10, we have 18 viewers from 25 to 34 in show 1, and we only had 9 viewers in that same age bracket for show number 2. So show 1 would be best to target toward 25 to 34-year-olds. So now we've looked at comparing data sets focusing on the center and the spread. We've looked at dot plots in example 1. In example two, we compared some box plots, and in this third and final example, we compared data sets and histograms. So that is it for this lesson video. Thanks for watching. Bye.